Okay, so welcome back for the second part of the USB saga. Um, I first off want to say really appreciate all the comments uh, and feedback that people gave me on the last video with all suggestions and tips and tricks of how they're going to get programs out of the machine, what to try. Um, and the main thing that kept coming back up was the emphasis that the older DOS, I think it was DOS based systems, um, can only use a maximum of eight characters. Now, when I put a program into the VF0E and then took it back out again, it would load up in your fine list directory, you could see the program, and it didn't matter if it was um, more than eight characters or whether it was just a number, it, it would see it regardless, as long as it's come out of the VF0E. When it came out of there, it came out as a file. It wasn't a .txt, um, it isn't a .nc, it was just listed as a file. Um, I tried to copy that, I tried to mimic it, I took the .nc, um, cancelled it out in Fusion 360 Post Processor, that didn't work. I numbered it uh, with four digits, I numbered it with five digits, I'd done a name under eight characters, I'd done a name over eight characters, and the list directory still would not pick it up. But one thing um, I found today, that's a bit of a mix between the two in relation to eight characters, is I have found a way to get it direct into the machine that so far has worked every time. Now, in relation to the eight characters, this job, for example, was just pouring out um, some can bucket balls on a cylinder head. So if I go to the post processor, you can see there's my job number, 78978, and you can see the name, 33 millimeter bucket bore. More than eight characters. And this is, as you see here, a .nc file. Now if I post this out, it will say override, because I did this earlier, so yes. You can see the job there, and the name at the top. And there's some of the code. If I close that down, minimise this window. Now this is just my floppy drive, which is mimicked to be to look like a 1.44 um, floppy disk. So if I open this up just to show you there, there's the floppy drive, 1.38 meg. If you go into the properties, see it just says FAT, not FAT32 or FAT16 or anything like that, just FAT. Now I think that creates the file system fat when it uses the software to turn it into a 1.44 meg floppy or mimic it as a meg floppy. And the software that I use for that is down here, is this one here. Now I downloaded that ages ago and that just basically turns it, turns a normal 1, 4, 8, 16 gig USB to look like a one point. 44 meg floppy. So if we open that up, now if I open the Fusion 360 programs, I'll take that 33 mil bucket bore, drag it to the USB. Now what I have to do is rename it. Now I don't have to, it's labeled as an NC file. Once that's taken out of Fusion, I can't change that here. Um, if I put .txt, it will change, but I can't change it to a blank file. So what I'm doing and what I found is I can name this anything. So to save confusion, VF3, that's it. Bang, done. Now we'll take that out of there. Now this will still be seen in the VF0E. If I just show you that quick, as an example, if I'll put the program in there. How I always do it, go across, <coughs> excuse me, floppy directory, press enter. And then just to show you there, it comes up VF3, NC, the file size, and then the date, 28 for the 11, 22, and a time, okay? So that's in there. Now we're not taking it back out, we're just leaving it on here, so I've not done a different version like I was having to do before. That was just to show you that it shows up on the USB stick. Now I put the USB in there. We can erase that. Go to list programs. 
Now if I press edit F1, disk directory, it says disk directory rather than floppy on here, but, and then I press enter, disk read. Now you can see it's come up with a directory. So floppy zero is the name of the floppy drive. Now you've got system one directory. Now this is still dated. I don't even know if that's a date because it doesn't really add up to that. 11.32, 26 of the 11th maybe, but it's obviously not 12.20, so unless there's a timestamp wrong. But either way, there's no program here. I can't jog that around, I can't find anything. If I press enter, it will say disk read, and it will error out. EOF found, I don't know what that means. If I press alarm messages, 435 disk abort could not read the disk. So we go back in. Now remember I named that file VF3. So if you try, some people said, oh, I'll just go into list programs, F4. Okay, so let's bring F4, directory read. Now it jumps in and brings the program for the directory, which is the same on all the machines, 08999. Now if I press current commands, you can see again, I've got the floppy zero and system one, but you can't do anything with it. You can sort of scroll the cursor down, but you can't click on it, no input. So you can't do nothing with that either. So let's go back out of there. I'm gonna delete that directory list. Which I don't need to delete that. So what I have found that works, two ways, edit F1, receive disk. Now if I press enter, we say enter the file name. Now if I do vf3.nc and press enter, disk read. And there you go, there's our job number hasn't changed and there's the proper name 33 mil bucket ball and she's done and now we're going to list programs it's at the bottom it's in the memory and I'm pretty sure it will also work let's just get rid of that disk directory because it does nothing having that let's delete this program again get rid of it so again just to show you it doesn't show up in the directory anywhere disk directory, same again, floppy zero, system one, whatever that means. So there's nothing in there program wise. But again, I can go. So I'm just on the list program screen. I can go vf3.nc and I can press f3 disk read. loading disk done and you see she jumps back in there 33 more bucket ball and there's your job ready to go so there's definitely something to do with the eight characters because if you do that with anything over eight characters it won't work so because it keeps its original name 33 more bucket ball has ball bar test nothing changes it's very easy for me to just every time i bring a program over I call it vf3 because i'll sort of the other day, um, I say the other day, this morning when I was trying to work this out, I was backwards and forwards on the PC trying some of the suggestions that you guys had left for me in the comments. And in between coming over, someone oh, started talking to me, um, and someone had popped in, and then I come back to the machine, oh, what did I number it again? Zero, seven, five. So I, thought, I sat that off and we just called it VF3. That way, I'm not gonna forget it when I come to the VF3. So that works every time. and. I don't need to remember or go in and change job names afterwards because as shown, it keeps its original number and it keeps its original name. The only thing the VF3 is used for is for me to remember as a name to um, receive the program from the disk. But what still baffles me is why the directory doesn't actually show anything. And I've not been able to figure that out. I've, I've looked at all your comments and your suggestions um, 
of what, where, when and why, of how we can try and get it working. And I've followed them and done all this. I think I covered all the suggestions that you guys made, especially with regards to the DOS systems like this and the characters, etc., etc. Um, and I couldn't get it to work. So the only thing that worked for me is that, and I'm not even quite sure how I stumbled across it. I think I was just checking a bit of everything and going from there. But yes, even if you bring the directory out first and then go back into list, it's just not there. There is no file on the USB. But as we've proven, it's in there, but it's just not showing. It's like it's, it's, like it's hidden in a separate part of the file system. So that's my workaround for now. Um, it's very simple. I haven't got to jump on that machine, pull a program and go back onto this one. I haven't got to get into the using the RS-232 setup, which a lot of people say is much easier. I haven't gone that route yet, so I can't really comment on that. I wanted to just stick with the USB that I use now. Um, nothing have to change for that one. I don't have to change the post processor in Fusion 360, so that's good. All I have to do is if it's a program for this machine, I have to rename it VF3 before I put it in there. So it's quite straightforward and that will do me for now. So yeah, possibly this might help you out if you suffer the same issues. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. It seems like every one of these old Hass machines and software versions has its own little quirky way of getting a program in and out reliably when it comes to a USB emulator. So yes. That's what I found. Once again, thanks for all your comments. Really appreciate all your feedback and all your ideas. Definitely helped me get through this and get to the bottom and find myself a solution. So cheers for watching and we'll see you again soon.